Okay, everybody. So it is um, week 12, or sorry, it's, um, it's week 6, lecture 12. Get out of this shell and get back into alternative fuels. Um, there it is. Okay. So um, let's just take a look at the Take a little look at the syllabus. At this at this point, you know, um, if, if you haven't purchased the textbook, you'll want to do so because we're we're well into um, the sixth week, and I've only copied the first first five chapters. So uh, if you haven't you don't have the textbook yet, uh, do get it. Um, it's actually quite good. This is this is one of the, one of the best uh, um, comprehensive textbook for this this type of education that, uh, that, I, that I've seen so again if you don't have the textbook please buy it and let's just kind of see where we are um, where we are so far um, increasingly carbon and oil constrained world one one thing I want to just talk about in, in terms of being carbon constrained the you know, underlying principle of, of these transportation fuels is that, it, at least we've covered up to now, is, is um, combustion. Everything we've, we've done now has been some hydrocarbon that uh, is, um, uh, well, not, not gasoline, basically. You know, we've studied gasoline, studied octane numbers, but we're, we're still some kind of combustion-based reaction where oxygen is combining with uh, some type of, of um, hydrocarbon. So we're not going to ever completely move away from that, but we are uh, continuing to, to move away from it as uh, natural, uh, you know, naturally occurring oils become scarcer. Um, environmentally friendly, uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, NOx and SOx. We've also talked a lot about CO2 emissions and um, I don't know, I haven't really really kept up much on some of the environmental uh, deals going on, but let's just take a look at Hurricane Matthew. I just want to just dive into the news here. We can kind of treat this as a, as a discussion board piece. to see if there's any videos out there. Let's just check this out. It's a pretty strong message. So you might say, well, is, is, um, is this caused by global warming or not? Um, you know, one, one thing that is, is certainly worth noting is that the emissions that we put into the air do make the air more uh, more energetic. So there's some thermal energy for you, very disorganized thermal energy. Let's just take a little, little peek here. There's the eye. This is a forecast and model. I normally talk don't, about it, but um, I'll show you one. Don't do this There's the forecast model for 7 o'clock tonight. Here's what the model thinks at 1 a.m. It's a little hard to see if you're on a small TV, but there's Fort Pierce, and the eye wall is on shore, very close to Palm Beach. Moving ahead into the 4 o'clock hour, into the 7 a.m. hour, and then finally by tomorrow afternoon, we're finally seeing the storm up to Jacksonville and St. Augustine, but now Look at this, Brianna, we're talking about a 140 mile per hour storm that has now been on land for about 200 or so miles. That's like an EF2 tornado that doesn't pick itself up off the ground for 200 miles through the plains. But that's not the plains. There are houses every 60 feet. There are condos every 1,000 feet. There are so many people in the way of this storm, that's why they all have to get out of the way. 
Now, we go take you up to Georgia. Why Georgia is evacuating the counties here east of I-95? Because we could see a significant storm surge as the arm bends here. Because the U.S. bends right through here, all this water could get shoved into Savannah, into Tybee, into St. Simons, or for that matter, a little farther to the north, on up into Hilton Head Island. That's the rub. That's the risk of a nine-foot storm surge with this storm as it gets up into Georgia and South Carolina. Hey. That's why they're getting away from that salt water. It's okay. I was just taking a little uh, side note here on the, um, the weather. It's talking about the weather. Oh, shoot. Then I, uh, I think I ended up. So we were just talking about they're just kind of catching up to where we are on the course. You haven't really missed anything. This is, uh, yeah, the uh, test that I tried to open up was. Just Number five. I'll fix that for you, too. Okay. Yeah. I opened it up, and I don't know what yet. I answered one question. I never submitted it, and I usually can open it up and just... We'll get you. Yeah. Okay, so as stated here, many of the technologies uh, that we're looking at have been explored and developed, uh, but the primary obstacle is just the, uh, the economic uh, production, just the, the scalability of some of them and the, uh, the delivery. In, in competition. Um, so that's, you know, that's where we are. Okay. Professional fundamentals, you know, a, a big part of that is engaging in the, uh, the discussion board, so showing that you're in tune with the topics that we're looking at, so please continue to use this, the uh, um, discussion board. Energy infrastructure, we have not really talked a whole heck of a lot about this. When we, when we do electric vehicles, though, soon, I, I want to start, um, uh, start discussing that. Um, some, some of the, the problems that we've dealt with so far, we looked at just, you know, batches of, uh, you know, liquid hydrocarbons. But in terms of how larger volumes uh, flow around the planet, um, we'll, we'll do a little bit of that when we talk about um, compressed natural gas soon. That's um, is another alternative transportation fuel. Um, and we, we have been doing this with our, with our problem sets, just understanding the, um, the, the chemistries involved. You know, in terms of hands-on, um, you know, the one unfortunate thing about this being a, a, an online class we don't really have any labs uh, for this course. There, there are field trips um, we could take. You know, we've been down to Hull's Dairy. We've looked at their, uh, their uh, methane gas production. I just took a photo today. This actually might, you know, it's funny. It's funny how these things happen. Um, I just took a photo today, and this might be something, if you would like to dive into this, and again, I'm not going to, um, it's not going to be required, but is that going to come out very well? There's a, can you see that, the green zone? I'm basically, and there's something on your phone that popped up too. Here. I couldn't really see No, here we go. This will be better. So it's, it's, let me just get the right. Yeah, shove that thing right up in there. The green zone, <laughs> Northwest Biofuels. So apparently, and th there are some tanks in the back of Missoula College. Let's just let's just Google Northwest Biofuels because it says it right on the uh, cash register. I have a colleague with that uh, company name, Northwest Biofuels, um, Missoula. Bio, uh, that's probably that. So I think they gave a, let's see, they gave a website. Northwestbiofuels.net, let's check that out. Lincoln Lake, Lab Lake, Missoula County, Montana. Isn't that 
No, this this one. Let's just see what North, NorthwestBiofuels.net. So those guys might have just tanked. I don't. I don't know. Um, Most of those guys are tanking. Most of the companies that are beginning here in Missoula, for some reason, they're just not. I mean, that's what you think about that place that was static sat down. That, I don't know how that place tanked. What? They, they were making, um, you know, the immune shots that every kid's got to have? Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. They were making a meningitis B vaccine. Oh. That's one of those vaccines that basically all kids get. I think we all got it. Hmm. Kids. Probably just moved somewhere else. No, they went bankrupt. Interesting. They went bankrupt. Yeah, you could, you could tell by going in and looking at everything in there. Everybody's like, why'd they take this? Why'd they take that? Why'd they take this? And I'm walking through the place again because they went bankrupt and they're yeah. all the money they got yeah. out of this place. <laughs> Garage sale. <laughs> oh, yeah, but why would anybody do this? Because they went bankrupt and they're selling the copper wire. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we just—I guess I just learned something that there there is no NorthwestBiofuels.net. So you might say, "Oh, well, too bad," or you might say, "Hey, here's an opportunity." So two different ways to look at that. Um, I just I just tried to find it, and it just opportunity for what though? Well, to start start your own company. You know, well, there's there's a a vacuum. That's you. Okay. Good. Yeah, I sent off something to Acuity over at the uh, this 3D printing place, the Fat Fat Factory over. You know where they used to have the office over in um, over by where the new college is at. It's right next to it. Oh, at Montech. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, it's, a, it's one of the shops in Montech. Maybe they took the old shop. I don't know. But it's called Acuity. Yeah. 3D printing and yeah. fabrication and stuff. Oh, they're still there? Good. I want to take a tour to see what, obviously, I'm going to get, Pennywise. Because if I can if I can draw the CAD, send the CAD off to somebody, make the little piece, and just get it here and start assembling piece by piece, I'm going to have something my engine's going to Oh, have. I see. For your, my uh, engine is going to sit right here. So oh, good. So I'm going to be able to work on it right, you know. Like oh, nice. A little, okay. Instead of being the big, you know, 350 engine block yeah. size that I've got it in now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, and then the other one, uh, prepare for an alternative fueled economy. Uh, let me let me just show you my own recent. Um, Be easier if we were in Colombia, or is it Brazil? It's Brazil. Well, yeah, Brazil does have a lot of uh, ethanol. Yeah. Well, what we what we do have here in Montana is a, is a heck of a lot of wood. Uh, we have a lot of, of um, dead wood. So we were lucky enough to attend this, and so there's your um, United States Wood Energy Team Forum, and um, it is it is possible to gasify wood. We've got this uh, wood gasifier. Another thing that. Um, Again, I, I um, would love to see uh, if, you, if you would like to do a, a project with this course. Um, love to go down and do the uh, the Biomax renovation. Oh, yeah. yeah. So here's um, this is you know that actually is our uh, our exact trailer right there. So that guy's got to get fired up too. So maybe we'll do a. a field trip to take care of that too. So there's plenty of opportunities here for uh, alternative fuels. And we, we, do, we do talk a lot about the societal, environmental, ethical, and the legal impacts. And, and really the, um, you know, the big legal impact is going to be whether or not the, the clean power plan you know, really comes through the Paris climate talks are enforced because that's that's really where what it's all about uh, right there. Okay. What else? Let's see. So here we are, dimethyl ether. We've we've talked um, 
a fair amount about it. I don't, and I, and I think at this point, I really just want to go out and move that electric vehicle that we have, just do a little hands-on. So, are you recording this? Let's do that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they can hear your voice though. It's okay. <laughs> um, so that's you know that's where we are at the course. Um, email me. There's a few few students had um, uh, a problem completing quiz number five, so I'm going to reopen that. But for now, um, I'm just going to kind of leave it there for this week. Uh, do the homework, uh, do the exam, and I'll see you on Tuesday.